Awesome. Now, perfect, guys. So I've been uh, bombarded with messages from people, from all of you guys in the group, and a lot of you who have just had huge breakthroughs, huge, huge breakthroughs in your internal world that's manifested in your external world in some way or another. And that is, it's crazy. It's incredible how much uh, people can people can do that and people can uh, actually sitting down to do the work. Sandra, welcome. And so I'm getting messages of people who have said, who have been sitting down doing the meditations like we did last week in the, uh, in the me first meditation and meditating before you do any business work, before you check your phone, before you do everything, just putting yourself first, putting that connection with yourself first. People have been doing that work full on and it's, it's incredible to see. And people are messaging me saying how much it's, it's made a, a difference. And I'm getting people who are messaging me saying, I won't say who to save their privacy, but a lot of people are messaging me saying, man, I did, I've been doing this work and all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting thousands of, like thousands of dollars in, with clients. I got a client with thousands of dollars or some or people saying, um, I just landed the ideal client, or people saying, I just landed the ideal job, the, the job that I wanted, the job that is my heart's calling, just fell in alignment, and, and now I've got my ideal job. Um, there's just so many different things that people are messaging me saying, I had a breakthrough with, um, with this fear, or with this pattern, or with this particular, um, with this particular thing that was holding me back, and it's just, it's just crazy how many people are, are benefiting and how many breakthroughs people are having because of this work, right? Because you're taking the time to sit down and just connect with yourself. And I'll explain a little bit. Um, I'll just make sure everyone has the link. I'll just, I'll explain why. It's because what you're finding is that when you sit down, when you connect with yourself, and you make the connection with yourself as the highest priority, what happens is you realize that you're not your stories. You realize that you're not the patterns that are emerging of emotions and everything like that. And it's the exact opposite. It's not the exact opposite, but it's overcoming a particular pattern we all have at some level, and that's the achievement uh, pattern, right? So we have goals. We have a vision, we have a particular lifestyle we want to live, we have a particular uh, difference we want to make in the world. And the achiever side of us sort of says, I need to go out and make this happen, right? I need to go out and take this particular action. And that's awesome, right? That's awesome in terms of a particular way in which we uh, move past the victim mentality. So there's a victim mentality that says, life happens to me, Michael Beckwith talks about this a lot as well. Life happens to me and I'm the victim. The achiever is like the consciousness above that where it's like, now I'm in control of my life. I'm now in control of my life. And this is what I do. This is how this is the action I can do moving forward. When you're sitting down to meditate and doing the work that you guys are doing, you're starting to almost transcend that, uh, even that pattern, that pattern of the achiever where I need to go out and do something. Because that's, you can feel that's very much from your mind. But when you sit down and meditate, it's from your heart. It's from something that it's a lot bigger than what your mind can comprehend. Right? And so it's overcoming this achiever mentality of, um, I need to go out and make it happen. And instead, it's the, it's the awareness that all I need to do is just sit down and sit in silence and things start to solve themselves, right? Things start to solve themselves. And when you sit down and meditate and you connect with yourself, you're like a helium balloon. Your consciousness just naturally wants to progress and naturally just wants to go higher. It's just sometimes our patterns, our smaller stories uh, want to keep us safe, want to keep us, uh, small because that's the limiting story we have of what we need to be in order to be loved. Right? 
So we naturally want to transcend. That's why these emotions are emerging, emerging. Our patterns of fear, patterns of doubt, patterns of frustrations, patterns of I need to know what I need to do. I need to know what's next, right? All those, all those emotions come to the surface because they naturally want to transcend, right? That's why they're emerging. That's why you can feel them consciously because they're ready to transcend. Who you are and what you are is just a natural helium bloom that just wants to expand and just wants to uh, heighten your level of awareness, your level of consciousness. And that's what you find when you sit down in meditation and you do this, you make connection with yourself. The highest priority is you naturally just feel your alignment. You feel your uh, consciousness start to elevate. And then your mind, your ego will freak out and say, no, 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 you got to go and do this. Or you got to go and prospect or you got to go and make this deal. You got to go and get clients. The reason why you guys are starting to message me in terms of your external results as well is because you're starting to find that when you connect with yourself, when you do this inner work, you're in alignment with something that's a lot bigger than your mind, right? Your mind can't realize, doesn't realize why it's getting these external results and it doesn't need to. You can just feel it, right? You feel in alignment. So that's, it's incredible. And if you guys want to keep me posted on your results as well, um, definitely do that. And I'll definitely do the same for you guys. I'm having heaps of breakthroughs, heaps of, uh, ideas and being in flow being in alignment with what what we can do with this group and how we can move forward and how we can expand it and how we can really start to shift the level of consciousness for a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs who are who are in here and who are participating um, that's something that i want to really highlight that you guys are starting to find out is that when you sit down and meditate your achiever mind will say you're not doing anything right this is a waste of time there's a higher guidance system that says this is the real work. And in fact, going out and achieving and taking action is a part of your small story of what you think needs to happen in order for you to feel enough. Is this resonating? May, maybe give me uh, some signals in the chat. Maybe type in yes, if this is resonating, ask any questions you may have, but this is just what I'm finding is this, Everyone's giving me some feedback around why this is so powerful. And I think this is, I think this is a big part. Yes, Christy, Paul, Gina, awesome. I know a lot of you on the phone out elsewhere, so you might not be able to engage with the chat. So Wendy said, I meditate for two hours this morning. Awesome. That's so cool. What I learned when I was meditating was so much that, Meditating so much in the other world, I need to ground myself. <laughs> we all need to ground ourselves. Irene, Stephen, awesome. Now, what I'm finding as well, and the exciting part about this and heightening your level of consciousness is moving from the place of, I need to know how. I'm talking a lot about this in my videos and in the group and everything like that, because this is something I find that entrepreneurs and business owners can really get stuck on is knowing I need to know the how, okay, well, how do I do that? Right? How do I move forward? What do I do now? And I love to just sit in meditation and sit with the feeling of not knowing, not needing to know, release the pressure of needing to know, right? That is so powerful to sit there and just feel not knowing. Allow yourself permission to feel like you don't know, like you're lost, like you're stuck. That is so much, that's so further advanced than someone who knows the steps. Because someone who knows the steps is someone who's working from their mind because that's what their mind can see. Someone who doesn't know and is okay with that is transcending so many more patterns and is is operating from a place of so, so much more alignment, so much more flow, because they're operating from here. They're saying, I don't need to know. 
And what I find is that when you do that, things start to flow out of you. So for example, I was just talking to my brother just then and explaining that before these calls, I generally have no clue what I'm going to talk about. I'll write maybe four or five uh, words on, on some things that I think will be uh, important, but I don't have anything scripted or worked out or anything like that. I just love to show up and whatever's emerging is meant to emerge. And this is really, really cool because when you heighten your level of consciousness and you move past that needing to know to do everything and you can't see all the steps, but you're okay with that and you're transcending these emotions and these patterns, what you'll find is that everything starts to flow out of you. And it won't be the six steps to getting six figures. It won't be a lot of different things in terms of what you do to get to the successful business. It'll just tell you the next step, right? Your heart will tell you the next step and ideas will flow and it will flow out of you naturally when you've heightened your level of consciousness. Are you guys finding this as well? When you're, when you're in there, it's almost like, it's almost like, okay, what do I need to do? Then you sit down and you feel and you feel fully and you welcome the feeling of not knowing. And then all of a sudden, when you transcend and you realize that you're infinite, you realize your uh, endless possibility, ideas just start flowing through you. And it's not that you need to do it. It will just flow through you. It's like you're the, it's like you're, you're the channel, right? You're just channeling this out of you. And that's what happens naturally, right? So Stephen, I struggled to get to that state of meditation. Cool. Awesome. So feel that struggle. All right. Feel that struggle. A lot of people are messaging me saying, how do I do this? Or what happens when this comes up? Or, um, or what do I do here? And, and this is coming up and I'm like, awesome. Feel that. I think that's my slogan now. It's like, awesome. Feel that. And someone, someone generally messaged me saying, Hey, I'm, um, I'm feeling this. I'm, um, I'm heavy. I just feel all this sadness and all of this. And I say, awesome. Feel that. And Stephen says, not awesome. Well, there's resistance here, right? There's, there's resistance. There's resistance. And, um, that's a beautiful thing as well. It's a beautiful thing how we can realize where we're in resistance where we think something should or shouldn't be, right? Where we think something, uh, I would prefer to feel this way, right? Uh, or I would, uh, I would rather feel happy than sad, right? There's resistance. So feeling all of it. And, and this is just what it's all about. It's about going to meditation and more and more things will come to you in, in awareness. It happens to me all the time. I'll be in resistance to something I have no clue. And then I'll sit down and meditate and I'll transcend some patterns and I'll allow myself to feel. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, Oh man, I was in resistance here. Let's feel that. I'll be like, Oh man, I'm struggling to get here. Or, uh, I was meditating the other day and I felt better in that meditation than I am in this meditation. And, and this part of my mind is freaking out. And how do I go back to being, how do I go back to being uh, the quiet mind? All of this stuff is coming up and I'm, and, more and more awareness to say, okay, okay, love that. Okay, love that. Okay, welcome that. And the more you can do that, the more you can just be the space that all of that exists in, right? You can just observe all of it. So Christy, I don't actually know anything about meditation as a tool itself or process. I just sit here in quiet and let whatever is come through. Yep. Sometimes my mind actually absolutely racing. Other times it is ideas. Other times it's feeling guilty because I have because I feel I should be doing other things on my massive list. Yeah, I talk about it all the time when I started doing this work um, over a hundred days ago. I did six hours of meditation in one day, and my mind flipped out, absolutely flipped out in terms of I shouldn't be doing this. I should be doing other things. I'm being irresponsible. I'm not a real business owner. All these things were just 
emerge and transcend and I'll just observe all of it. And I'll just, it's just like stories. The stories were just falling off, right? Falling away. And I was just falling away and there I'd, I would just continue to sit, just continue to sit, continue to be with it. And that's all part of it. So you guys will find out you, you'll have more answers in your meditation than I can ever teach you here. Right. What I'm teaching, what I talk about is like something that's external to you that you can take in and, and bring in your biggest breakthroughs will be in your own insight, right? Insight comes from within it's inside. So when you sit down and you start to transcend a lot of this, that's what it will be. My main focus when I'm sitting down is, there is just to be the space of all that existing, right? Observe a lot of those patterns, observe the, observe the, um, observe the thoughts, observe the emotions. And when you're in that space, what you're able to do is, is really just start to recognize that there's nothing you need to get out of meditation. Or you don't need to get anything out of it. You're just sitting there being, you can't put any uh, conditions on your meditation because right? what's emerging is meant to emerge. What's mer what's emerging is meant to emerge. And the way you're being in that moment is the way you're meant to, is, is how you're meant to be being because that's just how it is. And the more you can accept that, the more you release the resistance. That's just what all of this is. It's releasing the resistance, right? Whatever's coming up. So it'd be cool for you, Stephen, as well, when you say, oh, I struggle uh, to get in this state of meditation. Can you sense that there's some resistance? Can you sense that they're saying, I struggle to get here, meaning that I should be there, right? Rather than just being here. So Christy, your, your, um, your chat is also set to all panelists. So only I can see your messages. You can change it to all panelists and attendees if you want others to see. So one thing that I wanted to highlight um, and, and have you guys really write down and understand and do some work on is around what triggers you, right? What, what is really triggering you in, the, in your external world? What's really triggering you about other people? Because I'm doing a lot of this work as well. I'm reading the, the book, um, the, the dark side of the light chases and it does a lot of shadow work and it, it, it coincides a lot with what we're doing here in this group and what we're transcending in terms of our patterns. And so one thing that I thought would be really cool to do as a group and really focus on in this week is realizing what is, what you're being triggered by and what you're being triggered by externally is obviously a part of you that you're neglecting internally. And that's a huge opportunity, massive opportunity to do some work and massive opportunity to transcend a lot of patterns that could be holding back how you want to feel and also the success that you want to have, whether it be in business, in, in relationships, in your personal life, whatever it may be. So what does Steve say? It's more about not knowing what should come up. It's more about not knowing what should come up I find that my mind just wanders around thoughts, which I feel is not meditation, not knowing what I need to be accessing. I feel that all the time. When I have, when I'm just circling around thoughts, I'm like, man, I'm not doing it right. Or I, sh I should do it in a different way, or I should do it in a different location. Or I should do it in a different time when my mind's calm. Right, but it's, it's letting go of the resistance and saying, what's happening here is meant to be happening, right? What's happening is meant to happen and you can observe those thoughts. A lot of you know the, the analogy I use is like a fishbowl. Trust me, observing your thoughts is meditation. Observing your thoughts is so much heightened of awareness that so many people haven't accessed. 
right? So if you're holding a fish bowl in your lap, it doesn't matter if there's three fish in there that are swimming around all peacefully, or if there's 15 fish that are swimming around all quick and fast and fighting, it doesn't really matter because you're not the fish. That's the analogy I use about thoughts. Thoughts are exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether you have some peaceful thoughts that are moving forward, that are just uh, being nice and peaceful, or if you have like a thousand thoughts that are flowing around. It doesn't matter because you're not the thoughts. But even just sitting down and observing those thoughts for a half an hour, an hour, even if the thoughts just continue to go moving back and forth and that's all you can focus on, then that's beautiful as well, right? You're just observing those thoughts and you're just being in the space. Very, very advanced, very advanced. What's the, what's the alternative that a lot of people uh, indulge in? It's believing those thoughts and then freaking out and then acting from a place of limitation, right? So remember to not put any expectations or any conditions on your meditation and even on your life, even on your leaps. When you are taking leaps, no conditions on your leaps either. Okay. Yes, you distracted me, Stephen. I'll forgive you. <laughs> I, I shall carry on. So... When you're, observe, when you're in your life, truly pay attention to when you're triggered. So maybe you guys can type in the chat box, what triggers you about other people? What's something that other people do that trigger you? For me in the past, it's been uh, people who are lazy, quote unquote lazy, uh, people who are late and can't like seem to not stick to a time schedule as well. That used to trigger me so much. Um, for me, it's a lot of violence as well. Oh, that's ironic. Wendy says people who are judgmental. That is, that's awesome. Judging the people who are judgmental. Beautiful. When people can't help themselves and make incredibly wrong decisions. And I feel I can't be there for people. I feel I should always be there for others. People who don't indicate when they drive. <laughs> Love that. Paul, you're in Melbourne, so I'll just, I'll cut in front of you one day and, and not indicate. People who don't listen, awesome. <laughs> Jokes about people's differences. I was like, yes, me too. People who don't listen. People who use loud voices. What do you guys feel about green tea? Am I triggering a few people? People who ask a question and want Twitter long answers. <laughs> I'm actually doing a bit of a fast. So I think I might do a 24 hour fast. So I'm doing a, oh, drinking a lot of tea. Perfect guys. So you can sit there. This is what these sessions are all about, right? So feel free to take a deep breath. Really feel what triggers you externally about other people, about a circumstance, whatever it may be. Really feel that. So feel, almost go from your head into your body. Feel what it's like in your body. Feel what that feels like. Feel that resistance, that resistance to what is. Notice where you feel it, is in your chest, stomach, 
head, shoulders, legs, all over. Where do you feel it? Notice that, pay attention to it. Feel that resistance, the resistance to what is. And as you feel the emotion, as you feel that tension, you can start to let go of that resistance. Mal, people who are pushing in the queue. <laughs> feel that in your body. Welcome it, welcome that feeling. Now many of you may realize What you're feeling now is a pattern within you, right? Nothing to do with the other people, nothing to do with the circumstance. This is why it's so powerful is because it provides you the opportunity to highlight in your conscious awareness, a pattern that's within you. Chrissy, I feel it in my, in my chest and heart. I want to cry and run. Oh, well, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that it was, so, it was so intense. This is why it's so important. This is why it's so important to recognize when you're triggered, right? Well, Christy, what you're, what you're feeling has, is always within you, right? People can see in her comments, she's like, well, I didn't know uh, that was so intense. It was so intense, right? Because what your, what your heart, mind, body will be doing is pushing that down. So it'll be pushing it down below your conscious awareness. It's below your conscious awareness because it says, I don't want to see this, I don't want to feel this, so therefore I push it down. Therefore, when you see it in other people, it triggers you. So this is what really happens. Many of you guys know my, my content, my work. You'll know that when we're children, we grow up, developing particular patterns. We condition particular patterns of what we need to be, right? Who we need to be, what we need to do, what the world needs to look like in order for us to feel okay, in order for us to feel safe, in order for us to feel enough and worthy of love. So some of these patterns have been conditioned in us. And as we condition a particular pattern, the antithesis of that gets pushed down. Classic example in entrepreneurs, we develop the unconscious pattern that if I succeed, if I succeed, I'll feel enough. If I succeed, I'll be worthy of love. Love that to me means my very survival unconsciously, right? Well, what happens when you start succeeding and you get that love that you think you need in order to survive, what happens to the side of you that can fail? There's a side of you that can fail. There's a side of you that can make mistakes. There's a side of you that can look bad in front of other people. What happens to that side? You disown it. You push it down, right? How much energy do you think that takes for a part of you to be pushed down and be held down unconsciously it takes a lot of energy. And those sides of us that we're pushing down are still growing within us. They still impact our mood, our decisions, our actions, our relationships, our success in business. It still impacts everything in our life. It's just unconscious because we push it down to saying, if I allow that side of me to emerge, if I allow that side of me to take control, all of a sudden I won't be enough and worthy of love. That to me means my very survival. So what happens when we realize what we're triggered by in it, by other people or by circumstances, the external world, it starts to highlight what's within us, the sides of us we've been pushing down, the sides of us that we've been uh, neglecting, 
the sides of us that we've been avoiding, that we've completely disowned. So an example for me, I've worked in the hospitality industry, I traveled Canada, I worked in many different uh, restaurants, and I was triggered by people who were lazy, right? who were quote unquote lazy, who wouldn't pull their weight, right? who wouldn't chip in, who, wouldn't, who would just take the easy route. And whenever they didn't do any work, they wouldn't do it because they knew I would do it because I'm a hard worker. So I would be triggered by that. Now, is it true that I'm being triggered by them? Absolutely not. It's got nothing to do with them. Their behavior is just triggering a pattern within me. Their behavior is just triggering a pattern within me, a side within me that I don't want to see in myself, a side of me that's lazy. Because while I got into personal development and entrepreneurship and all these different things, all of a sudden I started achieving. I started pushing myself, started working hard. And as I worked hard and as I did all these different things and, and you know, did the to-do lists and, and started achieving a, a bunch, I neglected the side of me that could relax. I thought if I relaxed, I wouldn't be enough. So if I'm, you can think about this, if unconsciously I'm pushing down a side of me that's lazy, I'm pushing down this side of me time and time and time again, unconsciously I'm pushing this down, what happens when I see that very pattern in my external world, my brain's going to freak out, right? And say, don't let, and say, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that, right? You're triggered by that behavior because you've pushed that down in yourself, right? This is why when, if someone's lazy or taking the easy way out or whatever, I may be triggered by it, but you might not be because we're all pushing down different sides of us right? Different sides of us. So this is why when we're triggered by something else, by something external, it gives us such a good window into what we can highlight in ourselves, what we can resolve within ourselves. Because there's an energy there of relaxation that I was missing, right? There's a gift here. A side of me that can sit down in this chair over here and meditate, sit down and meditate for an hour or two hours a day is the side of me I was pushing down. I would have never accessed the, the group uh, that we're, we're a part of, the, the sides of me, the success I've been having, if I kept neglecting the side of me that could just sit there and just relax, who could have a tea right? There's an energy to all sides of us. And that's why this, this, this work, this inner work is so important because you learn to love all sides of you. When you learn to love all sides of you and you start to find that you have less and less resistance to what is internally and externally, once you start loving what is, you start accessing your potential because you're not neglecting sides of you. You're just loving all sides of you. And then you're taking all the elements, all the positive elements of all the different sides of you and integrating it. This is what I do with my clients a lot. We go through different personalities within ourselves and we find, we find ways to integrate all of it. Right? Sometimes I get my clients to, uh, if, they, if they're triggered by their lazy side, for example. So I can't be lazy. I get them to access that lazy side or that, that side of them that can chill and relax and really talk to it, really pay attention to it. What's the message there and how they can love that side of them and realize that what they actually, what that lazy side actually wants to achieve is exactly the same as the, as the hard go-getter and the achiever. They're actually on the same side. They just, they want the same thing. They want uh, a harmonious life. And for you to have a harmonious life that's in peace, all these sides need to be integrated and all these sides uh, need to be loved. Very, very hard when you're pushing those sides of you down. 
So everything that is coming forth is being, you're being reminded of when you're being triggered by someone else is just a realization that that's a pattern within you that can be loved. That's a pattern within you that can be transcended, right? And then when you also are doing this exercise, you can also ask yourself, what are the gifts that you know you have? What are the sides of you you also know that you have that are true gifts that you're hesitant to show, that you're hesitant for other people to know, that you're hesitant to share with the world? Right? Is it a creativity? Is it a love? Is it an expansion? Is it, a, uh, is it an exploration or something that you really, uh, that you know is a gift, that you know is a strength? Of you because there's the other side of us that says I know I have this gift but I don't want to share it I don't want to express it I don't want to move forward with it because of how people may judge me right or be or, or I don't want to express this and move forward with this because um, I'm scared of what happens if it doesn't move anywhere right there's the, the dark sides of us that we're neglecting but there's also the light sides of us that we're not showing right? That we're holding back. So there's the two sort of things we can think about that we can really start to pay close attention to, bring to our conscious awareness and start making some decisions based on love, based on courage, based on, you know, our higher selves. Let me get to some of the comments. Uh, Christy. I think it would feel like as if you were being held underwater forcefully and trying to fight for air. Yes. She says, wow, light bulb. Yeah. A, a, a very big um, metaphor that a lot of people use for this type of work is exactly that. It's exactly like, so for example, if I'm neglecting and making the lazy side of me wrong, it's almost like getting a beach ball and holding it underwater. Right. How much energy does that take? How much would that impact my relationships? How much would that impact my creativity and flow and aliveness and alignment? If I'm pushing that down unconsciously all of the time by making that side of me wrong, right? There's a story that says, there's a limiting story that says, if I'm lazy, I won't be enough. And therefore my my action and my achiever side when I do take action and move forward is only going to be at the vibration of this small story. So pushing that down is so much more different than me just loving all sides of me, me not resisting, just being in acceptance of all sides of me and just letting that ball go. Just letting it float on the surface with the rest of me. How much more light will you feel when you start to love these sides of you? Right? How much lighter will you feel? And how much can you, can you use that lightness in your life with your decisions, your actions? How much more value can you give when you're operating from that place of lightness? What else do we have here? Paul, this is so true. Reacting to others is giving away our power because it's got nothing to do with them, right? It means we are not in control of ourselves. So good. Awesome. So when he said, when he asked a good question, so what if you're burying a part of yourself that is not good? That mean, that, that's assuming that a part of you is not good. There's no parts of you that are not good. There are no parts of you that are not good. This is the way I would describe it. It's not, if, you, if you're viewing it as not good, you're viewing it from a particular story. Right? A particular story. Even the sides of us that can do very bad things are not bad. They are not bad. There's no sides of us that are bad. They're just sides of us that is. Even the size of us that can hurt other people, even the size of us that can do the wrong thing, all of that needs to be loved. 
I thought about this all the time in terms of, because what I'm triggered by a lot is violence. A lot of violence. And even within me, I dove in deep and I love that side of me. I've never been a violent person. Um, but uh, I'll be a bit vulnerable and open and honest here. When I was thinking about this sort of stuff, I used to have dreams all the time. Now dreams at a point from my limited knowledge, dreams, when you dream something, it's almost like you dream it because it's your unconscious making sense of something that you couldn't consciously face. Uh, Michael Singer talks about this all the time. And what I used to do, I used to actually dream a lot of violent dreams, a lot of violent dreams. I would dream of me um, hurting someone or like, or, or a bad guy and hurting them like physically all the time. And that's because I was neglecting the side of me that could be, that could be violent. I was pushing that side of me down. And so my unconscious mind says, no, you need to be, you need to, uh, you need to face this, right? You need to be, you need to love and accept all of what is. And so you're in dreams, your unconscious mind will help you face the things that you were unconscious, that you were consciously not able to face. Actually, when I started doing a lot of this, um, meditation and I started loving a lot of these different sides of me all of a sudden those dreams stopped all of a sudden those dreams uh, went away because I loved the side of me that could be violent right I had recognized in myself that there may be times when I, I need to be violent right what happens if someone broke into broke into my house or broke into my family's home, tried to hurt my family, all of a sudden I would need to have that energy, right? I would need to have that violent energy within me to protect, protect me, right? There is, there is a circumstance for everything. And so once I accepted that, the dreams actually went away. I never, I haven't dreamt things like that since. But you can think about the patterns that you are triggered by, right? Patterns you're triggered by and what you're pushing down or your, what sides of you you're neglecting. And this can also come up in meditation. This is why it's so important in meditation when things arise to feel them fully. This is the missing link of the entrepreneurial world, I find. And I, I really, since, since this group has had so many benefits and they're having so many breakthroughs. I'm so keen to just expand this work and bring it to entrepreneurship. That's why in this group, I'm willing to just give so much away for free. And uh, my creativity and flow is aligned with just giving you so many resources and tools to do this work. Cause I just feel called to bring this awareness to the entrepreneurial world and for people to do this work uh, because it's the missing link in entrepreneurship where a lot of people are achieving and they don't realize they're achieving from a limiting story, right? That they're achieving and they're pushing and hustling from a limiting story. And therefore they can only achieve what, what is seen by their limiting story, by their mind, rather than realizing they are infinite. And you are so much more than that small story. Now, Chris says, how does this relate to people who have addictions? I'm not an addiction expert. I can't really talk about, uh, about that side of things. Um, but there'll be many things. There'll be many, many things, uh, pieces of research you can look up. Um, this all interconnects. It really, really does all interconnect. Okay. Now, angry. People trigger me because I hardly, I hardly ever allow myself to express my anger. Yeah. In the book that I just read um, around the Hoffman process, things around anger um, can really come up and it needs to be expressed how in a healthy way, but anger is anger is an emotion of a lot of energy and a lot of built up energy. Um, 
I really haven't heard this before, but they are big, big believers, those who do the Hoffman process in releasing that anger physically um, through dance, through expression, through yelling into a pillow, whatever it may be. Um, that's their form of feeling fully, especially around anger. Um, I've, I've overcome anger and um, I shouldn't say overcome, but I've, I've grown to accept the anger when I feel it fully just by sitting down there and feeling it. Uh, but a lot of people can just really uh, express it in other ways, physically, um, by movement, which is really cool as well. Now, does anyone have any questions? I'm just gonna look at these. These are the notes I wrote down, just a few words, but it seems like this is all, uh, this is all sort of covered. Um, but it's awesome that you guys are starting to type, type in the chat box and do this work as well. It'd be cool to see what comes up for you because now you can start to build the muscle of recognizing when you're triggered by something else, it's got nothing to do with that something else. It just, it's, your, it's your mirror. It's your mirror. The world is just one big mirror, right? What you're triggered by out there is nothing more than your unconscious mind seeing and relating to what's happening in here. This is huge, huge if you're on an entrepreneurial journey. Really, really big. Because if you, if you know that, so for example, um, and there are many gifts in here, right? Many, many gifts. So for example, um, I forget who said it before, but a, a lot of people around listening, hate people who don't listen. Who are you really not listening to? Yourself, your internal patterns. Like there's so many gifts in here that are like a, a level deeper than what most people go. It's really just a level deeper. Um, but what most people do is they get triggered by that external circumstance. They make that circumstance wrong, right? Or they play victim. They make that circumstance wrong. And then they do whatever they can to avoid that circumstance. So I would do whatever I can to avoid um, lazy people. Or I do whatever I can to do the work and then make that person wrong. Who am I really making wrong? It's myself, right? Who am I really neglecting? It's myself. There's so many insights here that are just that level or two deeper than what most people go. Hopefully you can feel that. And that's why sitting in meditation and doing this work is, it is just, it's the golden link in this, in this whole entrepreneurial journey. Okay, Stephen, I'm learning to love all sides of me by bringing them up in meditation, acknowledging and allowing them to come to the surface. Beautiful. If someone's behavior irritates me, this is a side of me that I need to access, allow and love. Yes, totally, totally, totally. And feel it fully, right? Feel it fully. And within that is so many gifts, so many gifts. From this, you can start to express who you really are. Underneath all of the conditioning of years, even decades of conditioning, is a side of you with infinite potential, a side of you with infinite possibility, infinite creativity. When you pour that into your business and you operate from that place, you can't not thrive. It just, it, you can't not thrive because your consciousness is just always elevating, like I said before. It's always elevating, it's always moving up and you can't stop that if you get out of your own way. If your ego gets out of its way, if you stop operating from your head and start operating from your heart, right? You can't not transcend. You can't not move forward. And that just pours in your business and it's effortless. It is effortless. What you're trying to do, what your mind's trying to do, your unconscious mind is trying to, it's just naturally doing. It's just your mind will get in the way because it says, if I do this, I won't be enough. Let's stick to a small story. It is crazy. Can you, can you sense how big this is? Can you sense how, how much of a game changer this is for entrepreneurs to realize that what they've been after, what they've been going after, what they've been trying to achieve, their unconscious mind is trying to do that anyway in so much less, with so much less effort. 
It's, it's the helium balloon that's trying to emerge. It's trying to continue to go up. And then your mind's saying, oh, I need to do this, 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 and this, so I can be enough. So then, all of a sudden, so then I can try and get to that place. That's why this meditation, putting yourself first, putting the connection with yourself first, right? Doing this me first meditation, we're calling it, is a game changer. And that's why so many of you are messaging me with so many breakthroughs and insights. Because you realize business isn't hard. Business is in flow. Business is an extension of you, right? Business is just an extension of who you are. You just need to access that part of who you are. So Wendy, as an example, you are, you are saying, if slow people annoy me, that I need to slow down. That would be cool. But there's always a deeper thing here, right? So for example, if someone's, if there's someone in the, like someone that's moving slow in the car, you're in resistance to saying they should be faster, right? So feel that. Feel where you're in your resistance. And what you might start to realize is that you think people should be the way you are. Right? So it would be cool for you to also slow down and see what happens in your mind. See what side of you you're neglecting. See what side of you you're pushing down. If you slow down and, and realize that. Right? So I was pushing down the side of me that was lazy. So when I meditated for six hours in one day, that whole thing freaked out. So I mean, said, if you sit down here for six hours, you're going to die. You will die. But as I sat there and just watched it, that story just fell apart. It just transcended. So I'm keeping mindful of time. I know many people also always need to leave on the hour but I'd be happy to answer any questions. I love how you guys are starting to post more in the group and share your wins and ask some questions and share your dedications to the challenge, the meditation challenge. Um, it would be cool uh, to share with the group also if it's, uh, if it's uh, aligned with you um, around this work, what you're triggered by, the size of you that you're wanting to, <clears throat> that you're dedicated to love unconditionally and really start to move forward with this. So you can recognize this throughout the week. Write down, write down everything that you're triggered by, whether it be lazy people, people not listening, um, people that don't follow the rules, people who are violent, whatever it may be, right? Christy, I would die. Sitting still is so hard. My husband always makes fun of me because he says, I don't even, I don't even stop my sleep, oh God. Yes. Can you think about how I talked about this in, in um, one of the other calls? How crazy is it that it's scary to our mind to sit? Right? If you think about this, if you are scared to sit because you're scared of what's coming up in here and what's coming up in here, how the hell is that a platform for a successful business? How the hell is that sustainable? If you're not okay with what's happening in here, right? If you're not okay with sitting down, noticing what's emerging within yourself, if you're not okay with your patterns and you're too terrified of that and, you're, and your answer to instead of feeling here is to go out and do that, to me, that is just not sustainable. And it's just, it's just not accessing the type of insight and creativity and flow and alignment that's necessary. It's, uh, it's a game changer when you're able to actually sit down and transcend these patterns. I know, trust me, my ego and my mind also says you're going to die. But when you take action from that place, when you're like, I don't want to feel here, I'll, I'll just take the action. You're taking action from that smaller space. You're taking action from the vibration of you saying, I need to take action so I don't feel here, right? It's a very, it's a, it's a low level vibration. And so all your business will be at that vibration. 
So awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And your mind can't, your, your, your mind can't see what your heart will do, right? So a lot of people say, oh yeah, but when I take action, I get a lot done. And yeah, you get a lot done. You can get a lot done. You can progress. You can get some results. But you can only get results based on what you can see or what your mind can see. This here might be a, a slow progression, but here it's exponential. So I'd love to keep this conversation going. Keep it going in the group. Message me if you have any questions. Message me if you uh, want to share some wins as well. Um, but because of this conversation, you'll notice now when you're triggered and you'll notice the opportunity. You'll notice the opportunity where you're pushing down those beach balls, right? You'll notice that. And it's really, really impactful work. And you can just pour out this into your business and you can start spreading more of your light, right? More of your light, more of the positive qualities that you want to share. And um, it's really, really cool work. So write down a bit of an exercise, write down everything that you're triggered by. And then you'll have something in your meditations that you can really start to question, right? So awesome work. Awesome, awesome, awesome work. I'll keep you guys posted on this, uh, on this um, business course that I'm creating and I'll, I'll send that off to you guys, whoever's interested, whoever commented on the post that's in the group. I'll be sending that to a lot of you guys. And man, it's, I'm excited to kick off 2020 with, a, with stuff in this group and creating movement and growing it. And I'm, I'm truly honored that you're all a part of it. So thanks so much, guys. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it.